Hi! Hello, folks. Good to be here this evening. Well, as you can see, we're starting a new game. Uh, we finished Pokemon Yellow on Saturday. Um, and honestly, I just thought it best to go straight into Generation 2 Pokemon. Um, Pokemon Crystal was also on the Game Boy Color. Um, we're going to start a new game. And Generation 2 games act as a direct sequel to Generation 1. So I really wanted to go straight into it. And, fun fact, Pokemon Crystal is probably my favorite video game of all time. So I'm stoked. This is gonna be super fun. Um, and there are going to be a lot of fun differences from Generation 1. Um, are you a boy or a girl? Um, so, first thing, um, this game gives you a choice of being a boy or a girl, which is amazing. Um, in up until this game, because there are two games that came out before Crystal, Pokemon Gold and Silver, and they are much like the Pokemon Red and Blue to Pokemon Red and Blue's Yellow, if that makes sense. Um, so Crystal's the third version, and it's the first game that you can be a girl, uh, which is super cool. Um, but I'm gonna be a boy. I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna be me this time around. Um, huh, huh, you woke me up. Will you check the clock for me? So this is something, another huge thing um, that you do in this game is that you set the clock. And basically, the game is on a day-night cycle, much like you are, which was a huge difference than the original. So we are going to set it to what time it is right now for me. So 7 o'clock, and it's going to be 7 minutes. It's 7.07. Night 707, no wonder it's so dark. Oh, what up? Hello? How's it going, spicy? Um, let's see. Hello, sorry to keep you waiting. It's Professor Oak again. Hey. Oh, very jealous of the Lugia plushie? Yes, I adore my little guy. It's right here. Uh, Lugia's a Gen 2 Pokemon. Uh, let's see. Okay. My name is Oak. People call me the Pokemon Prof. Uh, this world is inhabited by creatures that we call Pokemon. This is a whooper. So cute. Um, people and Pokemon live together by supporting each other. Some people play with Pokemon, some battle with them. Um, okay. So, we set our clock. That's a huge difference from Generation 1. Um, even though it's on similar hardware as Generation 1, there's like big graphical upgrades. Um, and here's our new sprite. This character's hat is backwards. <laughs> That's how you know it's different. Um, your name? You know what? I am just gonna call us... SCG. That's Silver Cave Gaming for you. Um... Are you ready? Your very own Pokemon story is about to unfold. You'll face fun times and tough challenges. A world of dreams and adventures with Pokemon awaits. Let's go! New music, of course. Um, I love this game so very much. Nothing feels more like a warm blanket um, on my soul um, than this game. Oh, there's no item in here. Um, okay. So here we are in our room. Let's go downstairs. It begins very similarly to the first game. What up, Mom? Oh, SGG. Our neighbor, Professor Elm, was looking for you. Um, it's a long-running thing in the Pokemon franchise. All the professors are named after trees. It's cute. Um, so first is Oak, and now it's Professor Elm. The Pokegear. Um, for all you <laughs> youngins out there, this would have been like a big deal. Um, oh, what is today? Today's Monday. Lovely. Monday, is it? It actually is daylight savings time. Um, come home to adjust your clock for daylight saving time. By the way, do you know how to use the phone? I do, but you're gonna tell me anyway. Um, 
So yeah, the Poke Gear in this game is kind of just like... It represents kind of like the early cell phones that were starting to come out. Like, <laughs> no, what is a phone? Exactly. Um, it was kind of a big deal um, when this game came out. This game came out in 2000 or 2001, I believe. Um, I'm visiting! Ah! Oh, how cute. Alright, so we're gonna go see Professor Realm. Here we are, as you can see, it is nighttime. Um, this place is called New Barktown. Um, but what's this guy doing over here? This red-haired fella. So this is the famous Elm Pokemon Lab. Whoa, what are you staring at? Yo! Very rude. Extraordinarily rude. Okay. So here we got our boy Professor Elm. Um, he's conducting Pokemon research, and he was wondering if you could help me with it. So... This game, in Pokemon Yellow, we did not get a chance to pick a Pokemon. We, you always start with Pikachu in Pokemon Yellow. Um, excuse me. But, oh, uh, hey, I got an email, another huge deal in 2000. Um, Mr. Pokemon is his acquaintance, that's a bit on the nose, right? Um... Wait, I know. Can you go in our place? So basically, we gotta go see Mr. Pokemon, and we are going to get our first partner Pokemon. Um, <laughs> Professor Elm's laptop does look chonky. It might it might have been one of those like really thick boys back in the day. Um, I'm also reminded of like the big desktop computers that you could get that were super chunky and you can like see through them. So here. We have a choice of three Pokemon. We have Cyndaquil, the fire type Pokemon. Um, we don't know who we're gonna pick yet. We also have Totodile, the water type Pokemon, which is wonderful. One of my favorites ever. And then we also have Chikorita, the grass type. I adore all three of these starters so much. I love them, but I think for this playthrough, I still don't know really what we're gonna use yet. I kind of had a plan last time. This time, I kind of wanna I wanna vibe through it a little bit, um, especially because as we go to different places, um, some Pokemon are only available during the day or in the morning, and some Pokemon are only available at night. And we are starting at night, so we're just gonna have to see what's available. But I am gonna begin with. Cyndaquil. Generation 2 is really one of the only generations where I love the fire starter. Um, uh, all right, anybody's got a name for a Cyndaquil, let me know. Oh, I love my boy. I will definitely be giving a nickname to my Cyndaquil here. Um, but uh, he is a boy. But as we play through this game, um, there are not a lot of fire-type Pokemon to choose from as you kind of go through your playthrough. That was another reason why I wanted to start with Cyndaquil. Um, <laughs> Cyniquil. <laughs> I love that. You will be known as Cyniquil. Uh, so funny. Oh, where's the Q? Honestly, where's the Q? Okay, there it is. Um, excellent name. Sinaiquil. Even when he evolves, he's gonna be named Sinaiquil, and that's fine. Um, okay, so Cherry Grove City is the next city over. Um, uh, yes, you get good old Professor Elm's phone number. Oh, 50% <laughs> chance to get affected by sleep moves is Sinaiquil. Good one, good one. Um, so we can heal him here. Let's do it, man! Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, what does he do? Oh, thanks, dog. Appreciate you. He just really stopped us in our tracks there. Um, okay, so this guy's still being a jerk over here. Oh, that little thing on the bottom. Little thing on the bottom. You walk here. Because uh, in Pokemon Yellow, you start in Pallet Town. 
you here you start in New Bark Town, which is cute. And uh, I love when you go to a different city or route, it shows you which one it is. This is the first game that did that. Um, because Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Gold and Silver are really great. They're Gen 2 games. They're basically this game. Um, but there's just a couple little things, like how the sprites move. Uh, Crystal was the first game to do that. I loved this as a kid. Completely blew my mind. Um, yeah, and those, those joining us from Generation 1, you'll notice um, a lot of differences here. So here we are on our first route. Um, Hoot Hoot, as you just saw, that is kind of one of the new regional bird Pokemon, because in yellow we went, uh, we caught ourselves a Pidgey, and Pidgey, ooh, excuse me, Pidgey is available during the day on this route, um, but at night we have Hoot Hoot, the nocturnal owl Pokemon, and that's like a very clear... There's a very clear line of, like, day and night Pokemon in these first couple routes. Like, you have Rattata here, um, which we saw from the first gen. Some people say Rattata. I've always said Rattata. Um, I think the anime said Rattata at one point. There's something down there? No. Um, so here we get into Cherry Grove City. And this guy, I believe, he shows us around, right? If you'd like, I can teach you a few things. Absolutely. And he just kind of parades us around town, gives us a little, little lay of the land, gives us a little tutorial section, you know. Not anybody's favorite thing, but it doesn't last very long. Tells us about the Pokemon Center, where we can heal, Pokemon Mart, we can buy stuff. Their prize Pokemon there. Got some water going over here. Some po Pokemon are found only in water. Huh, <laughs> so true. And then I think he find I think he gives us our map, if I'm not mistaken, after our little combo here. Ah, yes, he does. He does indeed. Um, but I oh gosh, guys, I'm so excited to start this game. This is my favorite game ever. Um, one of my favorite things also is the morning filter. Uh, usually I don't stream in like during the day or. Uh, so usually I don't stream in the morning, but I might have to try to stream in the morning on like one of these Oops, yeah, one of these Saturdays here. Yeah, the colors are great Like the whole experience is just I'll buy a couple antidotes because you can get poisoned um, And a couple of awakenings. I usually like to buy two of each here at the start um, And we can always sell them later if we don't use them Um just so many major improvements from Generation 1. And here, if we look, our bag is actually way different because there's like pockets that have different things. Like here are items. There's, this is for Pokeballs. This is for the key items, the TMs and HMs. This is a lifesaver because if you remember in Pokemon Yellow, so annoying having to just kind of deposit all your TMs, basically, just because they can't fit in your bag. Um, oh, yes, and here are berries. This is something that isn't in Generation 1 either. You'll hear me talk about a lot of the differences between this game and Generation 1. Um, Generation 2 is uh, considered one of the better, or at least um, kind of game design-wise, considered one of the better... Uh, games um, in many ways. In some ways, not as much, but in some ways, they just add so much depth to what already existed in Generation 1. Um, much like the day-night cycle, you have these berries. And what these berries can do, um, we might see in our first battle, what you can do is that you can give them to your Pokemon to hold during battle. Ooh, we got a scary little spider here. Spinarak. Um, we have yet to get any Pokeballs, so we are just kind of in a holding pattern there. Um, and over here, you saw, uh, we picked regular berries. This is a Poison Cure Berry. A regular berry will heal you once you get down to, once you get down half health. And a Poison Cure Berry will heal poison if you're poison. And here's our man. Professor Elm said that you would visit. Here's our man, Mr. Pokemon. 
What do you gotta do to get a name like that? A mystery egg! Yet another new addition to the Pokemon formula introduced in Generation 2. I know a couple who run a Pokemon daycare service. They gave me that egg. I was intrigued, so I sent mail to Professor Elm for Pokemon Evolution. Professor Elm is the authority. Even Professor Oak here recognizes that. Um, so yes, we have our boy Professor Oak. And this is what I'm saying. Other generations of Pokemon, they don't really integrate generations as much. This is very much like meant to be a companion to Generation 1. It's not like its own thing like other generations are. Um, kind of like a direct sequel. Because as the story goes, um, the Generation 2 games were really supposed to be the last Pokemon games. But then it just became such a sensation. They were just like, we're going to keep this thing going. Pokemon Crystal Time, you're right, Mom. Um, I'm so excited to play it. Oh my gosh. Um, so basically they give us this egg and they want Professor Elm to kind of check it out. Um, oh, let's... Oh, yeah, I forgot that, uh, Oak is the one that gives you the Pokedex again here in this game. Um, who did we pick for starter? We went with Cyndaquil. Um, not many fire types in this game, uh, that you can do for a playthrough, so I wanted to go with, go with Cyndaquil. And he's probably my favorite right now. I love all three of the Johto starters. Um, but, uh, Cyndaquil is probably my favorite by nose. Oh, thanks, dude. Thanks for healing us. Okay. So. Um, ooh, we're getting a call. Uh, hello, SCG? It's a disaster. Oh, no! It's terrible. Oh, wow. Okay. So, Professor Realm is calling us because of an emergency, so we better hurry back. Um, so, um, I was going to say something about Generation 1 versus Generation 2, but I think I lost it. That's all right. Um... Do, 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 do. Music, again, is impeccable. Oh, yes. Um, what I was saying is, I said Johto. We are in the Johto region. Um, the original Pokemon games, Generation 1, which we played with Yellow, they are based on the, I believe, the Kanto region of Japan. And it's kind of really centered around, like, Tokyo and that area, which makes sense. It's one of the biggest cities in the world. But Johto is kind of centered around the area... Ooh, it's our red-headed friend. Our red-headed... Well, not friend. He's a jerk. Um, what a waste. A wimp like you. Oh, my gosh. So mean. Don't you get what I'm saying? Well, I, too, have a good Pokemon. Oh, yeah? Why don't you try being nice, man? For a change. So we have this mystery beehole. And he took Totodile! What? Um, but what I was saying is, so we'll have this first battle here. Um, you'll probably get to see, I'm gonna use Leer to load. And like, look at that battle animation! It looks so much better! I My mind was blown when I saw these battle animations for the first time. I remember playing this game on like a little Game Boy connected to the wall at Walmart. And I got to play like the first couple minutes like I'm playing right now. And when I saw some of the battle animations, I genuinely couldn't believe it. So here, my berry goes. And I recovered using a berry. But this uh, Totodile is, uh, is, is killing us right now. Um, in fact, ooh, boys and girls, we're going to have to use a potion. Um... Or else we gonna die. Um, it's usually not this tough. Very interesting. Um, all right, so I just gotta hit one more tackle. I remember the commercial for this game where they were excavating a jungle temple full of unknown. Yes, the unknown are those little alphabet-looking things that we saw in the intro. Um, coolest thing ever. That was a tough fight. He would have totally beaten us. Um, Ah, Smokescreen, yes. I remember seeing, like, the animation for Smokescreen and it rocked my world. My little kid world as well. Um, but... 
So this guy says, my name's question mark, question mark, question mark. I'm going to be the world's greatest Pokemon trainer. And then he pushes you out of the way just so you know that he's mean. Um, but as I was saying, uh, the Kanto region, or Kanto region, is based around kind of like the Tokyo area of Japan. But this Johto region is based more around the area um, kind of west of that. So it's more kind of like the old, kind of more traditional Japan, like uh, Kyoto and Nara, um, Osaka, places like that, which is super cool. And I, I will say this: I have, all, I really, really want to go to Japan because I think of these places in these games and. They are kind of like, they feel very like familiar and nostalgic to me. And it's like, I want to experience what the real life version of that is like. Um, I think that would just be so awesome because it's, it's a very weird sensation to feel nostalgic for like a place that you've never gone. But I feel like I could feel that way if I go to Japan. I at least want to go and see if I do feel that way. So we come here, and the, the police are here. Because that little red-haired boy, he stole that Totodile. Alright, uh, give me a name. This is going to be our rival through the game, by the way. So give me a name for the rival. Remember, he's a little meanie. Um, you battled a trainer like that? Did you happen to get his name? Alright, someone give me a funny name for our rival. Because if you don't, I'm going to have to come up with one on my own, and it's not going to be funny, because I'm not as funny as other people. <laughs> Stan Lee evil. <laughs> I, I love Stan Lee evil. Uh, Mom, thank you for the suggestion of piss. Um, I'm loving the pun, though. Oh, no. Um... Crap, that won't fit. Stan Lebel. Uh, hmm. You know what? I'm just gonna call him PP. PP. Okay, so PP was his name, cause he really. <laughs> Sorry guys, I went with PP. Um, he really is just a little PP head. Uh, let's see. Elm, this is terrible. Ah, uh, yes. So I hand him the egg and it cheers him right up. Cause he's like, this is such a great discovery. Um, I know, I gotta keep it PG for the folks. I want this to be a, you know, an, an, an all ages channel. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll try. I'll probably end up accidentally dropping some F-bombs here and there. Um, red PP is definitely a bad sign. <laughs> You're right, and it's a bad sign when we see that guy. Um, Alright, so... He's telling us to take on the Pokemon Gym Challenge, much like we did in Generation 1. And I am absolutely stoked to do so. Does this guy have another gift for us? Absolutely, he does. The Pokeball. To add to your Pokedex, you have to catch Pokemon. Absolutely. Alright. Um, so, Professor Elm told us to talk to our mom before we go on our adventure. Oh, here she is in the kitchen, where a lady should be. I'm just kidding. Really hard kidding on that. Um, wow, that's a cute Pokemon. Where did you get it? Uh, so you're leaving on an adventure. Okay, I'll help too. But what can I do? I love that she does this. Um, she can save your money. And I love it, because you can come back to her and she'll save so much money as you go. And she'll even buy you stuff. So she's going to save some money for us. Uh, Pokemon are your friends. You need to work as a team. Now go on. Oh, thanks, Mom. Oh, favorite town in Johto. Um, there are a lot that I love, but my favorite is probably... I love Violet City. Violet City is going to be one of the first... Oh, yeah, this guy gives you a little catching tutorial. But we know how to catch Pokemon, so we're not going to have him show us. Um, if you want to catch Pokemon, you have to walk a lot. Good advice, dog. Um, but yes, uh, we're going to 
just pop a little save here. There we go. Um, my favorite town is probably Violet City. It's one of the first uh, places that you go to. Um, it's where the first gym is in this game. And as I understand it, it's supposed to represent Nara, pretty much, which I think is super dope. Um, we're not going to catch a Rattata, Rattata. Because I don't really like that Pokemon that much. But, um... So up here is another route. You can't go that far up here. There's just kind of this patch of grass here. There might be an item, though. Because that is a route... Ooh, Geodude! Um, I am never usually a huge fan of using Geodude. I probably won't. Um... And what's happening is, in this game, there are a lot of Pokemon that can only evolve um, via trade. And playing on the way I'm playing, it's not really able to trade much, not really able to um, do that very well. So I'm just going to kind of stick to the Pokemon that we can kind of evolve all the way through. But, favorite town in Johto. I love Violet City because it's kind of based on Nara, which I think is really cool. Um, there is a place called the Bellsprout Tower, an ode to my wife, my dear beloved wife, um, which I think is super cool. Um, let's grab a couple Pokeballs here. We'll grab two more potions because I wasted one on the rival fight, and we'll just stop there for now. But there are a lot of really cool ones, like Ecruteak City is based on Kyoto, which is super cool. And there's some really good lore in there. Um, those are probably the two that stick out. I really like Olivine City as well, because that's where my favorite gym leader is. Um, we're going to save the game here again. I, again, I don't really know what Pokemon we're going to use. I do know I think I want to catch us a Hoot Hoot. Um, I do love Hoot Hoot and his evolved form knocked out. So um, we'll go ahead and catch this, this bad boy. I don't know if we'll use him all the way through our playthrough here, but I do want to catch one, at least for now. And like, even that just... Oh, hold on, I do want to show you this. This specifically was the battle animation that I saw for the first time, and I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Smokescreen. It's so cool to me! And when I first saw that, I was just blown away. I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. Um, let's try to throw a Pokeball. At our boy Hoot Hoot. Even this looks way better. What?! Come on now. You're gonna make me speed through this a little bit. Oh, and now I'm missing. Now I'm missing tackles. Um, let's... Alright. Don't mess around with me here. Thank you. Uh, can I get a Hoot Hoot nickname? Let's see. Even the Pokedex page looks better. Do you have the little footprint? The little footprint over there? Um, it begins to hoot at the same time every day. Some trainers use them in place of clocks. Oh, how about that? Um, give a nickname to the Hoot Hoot. Absolutely. All right, do we have any Hoot Hoot names in the chat? <laughs> Pogo, love it. Looks like a total Pogo. That is something that uh, my real life wife will do. Um, I'll just catch whatever Pokemon and I'll be like, name this. <laughs> and she's like, uh, fiddlestick. <laughs> or just whatever. Um, I'm gonna catch a Spinarak as well. Ooh, and this is a lady Spinarak. Madam Web, if you will. That's definitely what we're gonna name him. Name her, Madam Web, just so we know. Um, she was, uh, she died in the Amazon when she was studying spiders. There we go. And I think I was mad that we couldn't do Stan Levil for the rival. That was such a perfect name. But I think the Pokemon names, nicknames, uh, can be longer. 
So I think Madam Web should work, or at least some version of Madam Web should work. Yes. Um, let's see. It's uh, if prey becomes ensnared in its nest of spun string, it waits motionlessly until it becomes dark. Ooh, scary. Scary, madam. Let's see. Madam. Uh, I can even do a... Can I do a space? Yes, I can. Um, madam Webb. There she be. Perfect. Um, okay, so we got two pokes. Um, I think we can kind of continue on here. I'm just going to scoot back on to the Pokemon Center here. There is one thing I want to check, because um, I might use a very little no, little used uh, Pokemon in this game, in this run through. Um, because there is a Pokemon that you can encounter early on in this game that's kind of like famously known as being like useless or bad or weird, or at least it was when we were growing up. Um, I just want to see if I can catch it at night. Okay, I can catch it at night. It's very rare, so we might have to look for it a while. Um, but this Pokemon was just kind of known as being just like useless or bad. Um, but then that's what kind of endeared us to it. <laughs> uh, my cousin and I, basically, because we were uh, Pokemon buddies growing up. Um, we can't find them quite yet. We're going to have to battle a few trainers before we do that. So here, we're going to do our first foray into Pokemon battling for this. Or not, I guess not first foray. We fought our rival, but our kind of first true little battles here. New battle music, too. Youngster Joey, we meet again. Um, and something you can do in this game is you can give people your phone number, and they can call you and battle you again if you want. Um, so Poison Sting, very weak move, but it can poison the... Uh, opponent. Oh no, Madam Web's probably gonna die here. Don't die, don't die. Ooh. Jovel, more like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Joe Evil. There we go. I said Jovel. Joe Evil. So sorry. I boofed the bit. Um. Alright, so Tail Whip lowers our defense. We hate to see that. Uh, um. But yes, you can give other trainers your phone number and they can call you to re-battle you or more importantly there are a few trainers that can um, give you items and that could become very important in our run if we decide to do something with that which we might I don't know um, because there are I'm just gonna scoot on back once again and heal. Um, because there are a few Pokemon, like, really key Generation 2 Pokemon that I feel like I want to show off to you guys. Um. And it's very interesting because I'm realizing that on our stream schedule there might be some that we just miss and I just don't really show off to you. Um. But, you know, that's another reason for y'all to pick up this game and play yourself if you want. Because I can't show you everything in a, in a, in a playthrough. Um, but gosh, I just love this game. I love this game so much. I switched to Cyndaquil. <laughs> Cyndaquil. <laughs> I, I misread that. Um, for a second, just uh, um, in case we ran into something in the grass and we couldn't run away. Because... Our, our girl, Madam Web, is very slow. Very, very slow little spider. Um, 
Um, so this Pidgey shouldn't be too terribly threatening right now. I love how we're not getting any poisons. I love it so much. He said sarcastically. Because uh, that's the whole thing with poison staying. It's not very strong, but it does have a high chance to poison, allegedly. Which we have yet to experience. There we go. Uh, but we are going to have to swap out here. Let's get Pogo come in for the kill on this here Pidgey. Some bird on bird action for you. Not very long, but... Um, love to see that. Um, 10 experience points is just so little. Um, Alright, here... We'll stay in with Pogo, see how long he can go. Because uh, this Rattata... We'll use a Growl. Because we're probably going to have to use our boy Sonyquil. Um, yeah. And by hitting that Growl, we can lower the Rattata's attack. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, how's everybody's day been so far? My day was pretty good. Um, I actually took a half day from work in the morning. Um, my wife and I both did. Um, we were up late, later than usual, I should say, uh, watching the Oscars last night, and we just knew that uh, we wanted to have the morning to ourselves, just to uh, have a slow start to our week. Um, we do not do that very often. Um, good, still tired from the weekend? Yes, I believe that. Um, ours was just so incredibly chill, um, which I loved. But here, let's just get... A potion on the web because I'm not trying to do anything too crazy right now um, but uh, was it good tired or just kind of having too much fun or just a lot of fun I should say um, but yeah we had a really chill weekend we watched the Oscars which we love to do um, uh, poop from the time change like an old person I feel that I do feel that um, yeah, luckily, like I said, we took this this morning off, which was great. I'm going to speed through this a little bit, just because it's a lot of tiny little hits. Um, there we go, got that poison. Um, and we made our Oscar predictions. Out of 23 um, awards, I guessed 18 correctly, which is like the best I've ever done. Um... Let's go into Pogo here. Your cousin got married! Oh, yes. <laughs> 10,000 Murphys to talk with, I am sure. Um, that is wonderful. That is so wonderful. Um, oh, a nice critical hit from Pogo. Um, don't kill us. Okay. So we will swap into Sinaiquil here. So... Um, but that's great. I'm so glad that you had a good time at the wedding. Um, so something that you'll see a lot, there are new Pokemon in this game, in the Generation 2 games, and that's kind of what I want to focus on. Um, usually anytime I play a game from a specific generation, I, w I like to use the Pokemon introduced in that game and introduced in that generation. Um, but uh, something that you'll see a lot... And, that's, and this has kind of been like a criticism of this game. Um, there's actually a really good um, ROM hack, which if you don't know, people can like take a copy of the game and like change it, change the code to whatever they want. Um, or like, it's like a mod. I don't know why I'm saving, but here we are, I'm saving. Um, that kind of makes fixes to Crystal that are, that's really cool. Oh! My wife, my beautiful wife. Um, all right, as soon as I find a female bell sprout, oh crap, and I can't escape. Okay. Um, as soon as I find a female bell sprout, we're gonna catch her. I don't know if we'll use her, but she must be caught. Um, but yeah, in Generation Two, there's actually a pretty heavy focus on 
Generation 1 Pokemon, because one, they didn't include as many new Pokemon in this game as they did with Generation 1, and because in Generation 1, obviously, there were no new Pokemon, they were just the Pokemon that existed. Um, this guy, what does this guy say? <laughs> I walked too far today looking for Pokemon, and my feet hurt and I'm sleepy. If I were a wild Pokemon, I'd be easy to catch. Z's. Okay. Um, so we're not going to fight that person right now, because the squad's looking a little sorry. Um, alright, well, we're catching her. We're going to catch her, and she will be my beloved once again. Um, we might do something else as well. Um, actually, we will do that, but we'll do it later. I'll show you that later. But, yeah. Since, like I said, it was meant to be a sequel to the original games, there is a heavy emphasis on Generation 1 Pokemon. And a lot of people don't really like that. I don't really like that as much either. I would have liked them to have focused a bit more on the new ones. Um, but I definitely get it. It's, like, meant to be a companion. Um, hmm. Oh! I did not mean to do that. I did not mean to do that. All right. Well, we'll have to catch her later. Mm. This is Violet City. This is, uh, like my favorite city I was talking about. Um, it's super cool here. But really, before we get into the Violet City stuff, there are a few Pokemon I want to catch. Um, so I need to go out and get a few more Pokeballs. Like, walking around Violet City, we have our gym here. Let's see, who's the gym leader? Violet City Pokemon Gym Leader Falconer. The elegant master of flying Pokemon. Very cool. Um, so something else you'll see in Generation 2. Here is the Sprout Tower that I talked about, and it's like a little, like, like pagoda thing, temple, um, which are super common in Japan, especially in the region that this is based on. Um, experience the way of Pokemon. Ooh, very cool. Um, so I love Violet City. Something cool about Generation 2 is they... How many can we buy? We'll buy three for now. Ooh, I will definitely want an escape rope later. Um, that all of the gym leaders in this game have different types than the gym leaders in the Generation 1 games, which is just another, like, cool little piece of integration. Um, which I really like. So here for our last bit of the stream, we're gonna be in real, like, Pokemon catching mode. Um, let's see. Ooh, a Poliwag! Ah, oh, dang. Ah! I might catch this too. Yeah, let's do it. Nice critical hit. Ah, bubble. That's not the best matchup, so we'll go in Pogo. Yeah, sorry. Apologies, guys. I'm probably going to speed through a little bit of this since we're just catching so many. Um, Poliwag, again, not sure if we're going to use Poliwag for the whole playthrough. Um, because unlike Generation 1 and Generation 2, it's way harder to get your hands on the elemental stones. Oh, if we got a name for a girl Poliwag, let me know. Um... It's very hard, it's a lot harder to get your hands on the evolution stones. In the first game, you can just buy them. Um, but in this game, they're, again, just a lot harder to come by. So, we'll see. Um, it's kind of one of those people that, not kind of, it is one of those people that I talked about. You can get their phone number and they'll give you a elemental stone. Um, but it can be hard. And there is a way you can kind of cheese it. Um... But, uh, let's see. Um, I'm just gonna name her Wendy. I think that's cute. Um, I believe this is also a Pokeball. Absolutely. Love to see it. Uh, so we will fight that person eventually. Um, because you can get pretty under-leveled in that first gym. So what we want to do is we want to find some Bellsprout. Okay. We found my wife again. Um, so happy to see you, baby. Um, so we're gonna give this a, ca this a catch. 
Um, oh, there we go. Oh, I was not paying attention. I was just looking at something on my computer being weird. Um, okay. So we found my wife once more. Let's see if she'll stay in the ball this time. Thank you, babe. All right. And again, I don't know if we'll use her. But uh, yeah, a lot of times I like to go through, if we're just doing like a normal playthrough of this, like this, I just kind of like to go straight through and just catch what feels right as I go along and then we'll end up using whatever we end up using, you know? Um, really the only one I definitely want to use is um, good old Sonyquil here. Um, okay, but here's another thing. I actually want to catch a second Bellsprout um, because in Violet City here, there is an in-game trade that you can do. I was just saying, like, playing the game like I'm playing, it's hard on an emulator. It's hard to uh, trade Pokemon um, with other people, but the there is an NPC that involved that can give you a trade. Um, ooh, one hit point left. Let's catch this. Catch this bad boy. And the in-game trade in this game is right before the first gym leader here, uh, Falconer, the flying trainer, you can trade a Bellsprout, which is found right outside the city. I'm not going to nickname this one because we're going to trade him away. Um, you can trade a Bellsprout for a, an Onyx, which is super cool. And it's this little house over here. And Onyx is very, very, very useful. I think it's you. I collect Pokemon. Do you have Bellsprout? Want to trade for my Onyx? Absolutely. We are not going to trade my wife, but we are going to trade this Bellsprout. So, yes. And we get to see a trade. It looks so good. It goes in the little tube. And back in the day, if you wanted to trade with your Game Boys, you had to literally connect a link cable. Um, Bellsprout was sent to Kyle. Let's see. For SCG's Bellsprout, Kyle sends Onyx. Um, and I believe the Onyx is just named Rocky. Um, here he comes. Rocky, which is a great name for an Onyx. Wiggles those little rocks. Um, and something that you'll experience with a traded Pokemon is that you got it, dude. Um, it will actually grow faster than other Pokemon. But if you grow it too high, um, it can lose... It won't... It'll stop listening to you. What does this Onyx have? Does it just have, like, a berry or something? It's a bitter berry. Very cool. I think that, uh... That wakes you up from sleep, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to check that. Um, but yes, Onyx will be very useful against the flying type gym leader. Um, because those birds are not really going to be able to do much damage against the Onyx. Um, but they do have one move that is kind of like a little ace in the hole against Onyx. It's actually a really good piece of game design. Once again, something that I talked about a lot in Generation 1. Um, was the strength of the game design. Um, so here for now... Here's what I'll do. For our last little bit here, I want to go into this cave. And this is Dark Cave. And as you can see, it's pretty dark. You can't see anything. In Generation 1, you can at least see, like, the outlines of the walls. But here, you can't see anything. Um, and I am going to... Uh, you know what? I might catch a couple Pokemon here. We're really just uh, on an adventure. 
Because the Pokemon I'm looking for is very rare. Um, and it is not Geodude. Um, something that they do in this game is that they give... We saw Zubat and Golbat and uh, Pokemon Yellow. Um, Zubat and Golbat have been given a third evolution in this game. Um, and there we go. Ba, 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 ba. Something I'm going to do, guys, actually, is I'm going to turn off the music for now. Um, just because I'm speeding up like this. I'll just turn off the music. Um, but I was saying... Uh, Zubat and Golbat, they actually got um, an evolution. And I might catch a Zubat here. Um, I'm not sure. I, I'm kind of holding out to see if I find one at a higher level of uh, the Zubat. Because um, that would be a little bit better. There we go. Level 4. Let's catch this Zubat. Um, we've got Leech Life, of course. So, again, like I was saying, Zubat has a new evolution. And it evolves via a new mechanic in this game. Um, and again, not sure if we're going to use our, our girl Zubat here. Um, but, uh, oh, I just thought of a cute name for a, for a Zubat. I'm going to name her Korra. Um, oh, not at all. There we go. Korra the Zubat. What a great name for a Zubat. Um... But I'm looking for one specific Pokemon in here. And I was talking about it earlier. It's kind of, it was kind of known as like a joke Pokemon or like a Pokemon that's just like, why would anyone use this? But I loved it growing up because it was so like derpy and endearing. It actually got an evolution in the Generation um, 9 games, uh, Scarlet and Violet. Um... And I remember everyone was excited about the idea of it getting an evolution because it was so derpy. They were just like, oh, what if it evolved into something like super crazy powerful? That would be so cool. <laughs> um, but it did not do that. <laughs> it basically just evolved into something that was just more of what it already was, which is super funny. And kind of just like the Pokemon company trolling us. Um, but uh, I guess I'll go ahead and say that Pokemon is called Dunsparce. Um, and it's based on like, I think it's based on like a yokai, which is kind of like a mythical Japanese kind of animal thing. Um, I'm not the person that knows the most about that. Um but it's like a weird little snake thing. And in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, uh, when it evolves, Dunsparce evolves into Dunsparce. <laughs> and it's just this chonky little snake guy. And the only thing that happens is it gets like another segment in its body um, when it evolves, which is super funny to me. Um, and again, we're kind of running up toward the end of the stream, but I would really like to find and catch a Dunsparce here. Um, like I said, they're very rare in this cave um, at this point in the game, and they're actually like a 1% encounter. And there are a couple new Pokemon that are like that. Um, sorry if you guys don't like the way this looks. Um, there are a couple new Pokemon like that in this game where... They are only found at like a 1% encounter um, where you can find them. But again, you can talk to people on the phone and they will tell you if there's like a swarm of those Pokemon. So they can have like an increased encounter rate. Um, and if I don't find one here in the next few minutes, usually if I do a playthrough... And I'm using speed up like this. I can usually find one um, in not a too terribly long amount of time. But it looks like we're getting kind of unlucky. But if it gets uh, a little bit too long searching for one, we can wait until the next stream. Because um, I do, I would love to catch one. Or maybe I could catch one um, off screen for you guys. 
I might do that. Um, just so you're not waiting forever, just watching me go back and forth at double speed in the dark. Um, you know what? I think I will do that. So um, we're going to end our stream here. Let me get my, let me get my sound back on. Um, so, so excited for this. So excited for you all to join me on this crystal journey again. It's like one of my favorite games ever, if not my favorite game ever. Um, so I'll go ahead and find, uh, ooh, we kind of see the outline of things there uh, when you leave. I'll go ahead and find a Dunsparce off screen and I will catch it for us. Um, and with that, that is the first episode of Pokemon Crystal. I'm excited to see where this goes. Again, I have no idea what we're gonna use. If you have any suggestions of what we should use, uh, comment um, when I upload this to YouTube. Um, until then, thank you very much. I'm excited to start a new journey and I will see y'all later. Peace out.